we now go to the disadvantages of the rights issue. We now go to the disadvantages of the rights issue. Disadvantages of the rights issue. We now go to the disadvantages of the right issue. It's advantages of the rights issue. So let us write something brief about disadvantages of the rights issue. We now write about disadvantages of the right issue. Number one is that if the share of the company are not correctly valued, if the shares of the company are not correctly valued, if the shares of the company are not correctly valued, then the shareholder, then the shareholder can receive the shares, can receive the shares, can receive the shares, which can receive the shares at a price. So they can receive the shares at a price, at a price, at a price, which may not reflect at a price which may not reflect at a price which may not reflect the correct value of the share which cannot reflect the correct value of the share which cannot reflect the correct value of the share so that's now another disadvantage just in case you get the right issue shares normally the price is not the market price and normally the shares have been floated in the market. So because of that, it may not be correct. Number three is that the right issue does not increase the wealth of the shareholders. The right issue does not increase the wealth of the shareholders. The right issue does not increase the wealth of the shareholders. The right issue does not increase the wealth of the shareholders. You remember when you are calculating the percentage of ownership, maybe you are not in class, yeah. When you exercise the rights, they were remaining the same. When you sell the rights, they were still remaining the same. But when you ignore, it was decreasing. So there's nowhere it had increased. So that's now meant to be the first, the second one. The number three is that if the shareholder ignores the right issue, if the shareholder ignores the right issue, if the shareholder ignores the right issue, comma, the wallet status, the wallet status will decrease. The share, the wallet status will decrease. The wallet status will decrease. The wallet status will decrease. The number four is that it will lead to increase in the company shares. It will lead to an increase to the company shares. It will lead to an increase in the company shares. It will lead to an increase in the company shares. And therefore, and therefore, the market price per share will decline. And therefore, the market price per share will decline. And therefore, the market price per share will decline. And therefore, the market price per share will decline. The market price per share will decline. Then another paragraph, we summarize that. The success of the right issue depends on the following factors. The success of the right issue depends on the following factors. The success of the right issue depends on the following factors. The success of the right issue depends on the following factors. The success of the right issue depends on the following factors. Number one is that the current market price per share, number one would be the current market price per share. 
Number two will be the subscription or the offer price. Number two will be the subscription or the offer price. The subscription or the offer price. Number three will be efficiency of the stock market. Efficiency of the stock market. Efficiency of the stock market. The number four will be number of the rights required. Number of the rights required to acquire one new share. Number of the rights required to acquire one new share. Number of the rights required to acquire one new share. The number of the rights required to acquire one new share. So those are some of the items we normally consider when we want to know the success of the right issue. So there is normally a question on that. There is usually a question on that in your past papers. So if you check December 2021, if you check December 2021, that's on page 13, question two, part A. December 2021, question two, part A. That is on page 13. If you go to page 13, there is a question number two, part A. There is a question number two, part A. So in December 2021, on page 13, when you go to page 13, there is a question number two, part A, where they were asking me to highlight two factors that are likely to affect the success of the right issues. They were able to ask you to explain, highlight two factors that are likely to affect the success of the right issue. So we have mentioned about the current market price. So if the price per share will be too high, if the price per share, will, sorry, it will be too low, people may not buy the shares of that company. If assuming you are going to buy the shares of a company, but you discover that the price of that share is too low compared to the offer price. Compared to the offer price, you will not be able to buy the share because you will go at a loss. When the offer price happens to be more than the market price, someone will not be able to buy that share. Then when it comes, the subscription price now, it's again the offer price. Also, if you can see a company who has an offer price, let's say some companies can be having, like now we can give an example of Safaricom. Safaricom, probably the current share is around 28 to 31. But if you go to a company like Kenya Breweries, their share price is above almost 300. So most people, they will not go and buy that because it is too expensive. So when you want to buy the shares in Safaricom, it is easier because even the lower group, lower income people can be able to buy because a share there it goes around 28 but when you go to kenya breweries maybe it is above 200 so when the offer price is of that type no one will be able to buy it so those are the issues i was explaining when it comes to the efficiency of the stock market the stock market is the one which issues the shares it provides information so if it provides wrong information then it will not be successful because some people may doubt that it is operation. The number of the rights, I had already explained to you that they give you the number of the shares that you should be able to have in order to acquire one new share. So number of the rights are also key for the success so that the proportion element will be able to remain the same. So anyway, that is now on the issue of the success of the right issue will depend on those particular items. So let us also have another paragraph by noting that methods that can be used by the company 
the methods that can be used by the company, methods that can be used by the company when it is issuing out the ordinary shares, methods that can be used by the company when issuing out the ordinary shares, methods that can be used by the company when issuing out the ordinary shares will include the methods that can be used by the company when issuing methods that can be used by the company when issuing out the ordinary shares will include will include number one number one will be right issue number one will be rights issue so i've already explained that that shares are given to existing shareholders yeah when you check through when we started this topic i explained what we mean by the right issue shares are normally issued to the existing shareholders at a price slightly below the market price at a price slightly below the market price so if a company wishes to raise new capital if a company wishes to raise new capital they will give shares to the existing shareholders they give them then they give some little money which may not be the same as the market price so that is now when it comes to the right issue number two will be bonus issue bonus issue number two will be the bonus issue so for the bonus issue we say that this is where shares can be issued to the workers shares can be issued to the workers or employees shares can be issued to the workers or employees due to due to the better performance due to the better performance of the company due to the better performance of the company in the market better performance of the company in the market better performance of the company in the market so that's now when it comes to the bonus issue. Number three will be public issue or offer. Public issue or offer. Public issue or offer. The public issue or offer. So for the public issue or offer, you summarize that. This is where the shares are issued through the stock exchange market. This is where the shares are issued through the stock exchange market. It is where the shares are issued through the stock exchange market, through the stock exchange market. Through the stock exchange market. That's now when it comes to the public issue or offer. The number three would be the private placement. Number, the number three or number four? Number four is private, private placement or offer. The private placement. So they just remove the offer, just have it as the private placement. Private placement. So for the private placement, we summarize that it is where shares are issued to the private individuals. It is where the shares are issued to the private individuals. It is where the shares are issued to the private individuals in order to raise the finances. It is where the shares are issued to the private individuals in order to raise the finances. It is where the shares are issued to the private individuals in order to raise the finances. In order to raise the finances. Yeah, so you can just go to some wealth people, people who have money, you give them shares, then they give you money for the employment, sort of for expansion purpose. So apart from those ones, the another one has employees. There is employees or the stock option. 
the stock option plan. The employees or the stock option plan. The employees or the stock option plan. It's or the stock option plan. Sorry, the drawing or sorry. Employees stock option plan. The employees or the workers. I was supposed to write employees or workers stock option plan. The employees or the workers stock option plan. So that you summarize that. This is where the workers or employees, the workers or employees are given shares for free. The workers or employees are given the shares for free, shares for free, or at a price, or at a price slightly below the current market price, or at a price slightly below the current market price, or at a price slightly below the current market price, or at a price slightly below the current market price at a price slightly below the current market price. So those are now the details to do it, how you can be able to issue the shares. So if you go through a question, if you go through a question, So if you can check through a question for April 2022, April 2022, question number four, part A, you go to page seven. April 2022, question number four, part A, question number four, part A. April 2022, there is a question number four, part A. There is a question number four, part A. So that question four, part A, the question number four, part A, where they have written that, explain four methods that a company could use to issue the ordinary shares. Explain four methods that a company could use to issue the ordinary shares methods that a company could use to issue the ordinary shares. So those methods are the ones that I've just explained. If there is normally the right issue, bonus issue, public issue, private placement, employee stock option plan. So those are some of the ways that a company could use. So the question only wanted four, but I've given you how many? Yeah, so those five can now be able to work from that argument. So I would like to do another practical question. So I'm going to do another question and we do it together. November 2017, question number two, part B. We can check November 2017. Question two, part B. November 2017, question number two, part B. November 2017. So maybe before I do that one, I will get another small one and put it together. So I'll first do the one for May 2017. We first check May 2017. We can first of all check the one for May 2017. Question number two, part B. May 2017. Question number two, part B. May 2017. Question number two, part B. 
May 2017. So this one should be on page 53, May 2017, question number two, part B. May 2017, question number two, part B. So you go to page 53, you go to page 53. So that page 53, it is about Nyanduso Limited. Is making a one for four right issue. Is making a one for the four right issue, costing shilling 6.4. Costing shilling 6.4. So the company has 4 million shares in issue with a market price of shilling 10.8 per share. With a market price of 10.8 per share. The new shares are expected to yield 5% earnings, 5% earnings, and the price earning ratio is 10, and the price earning ratio is 10. So required the theoretical x right price. Then also normal letter two, the value per share after the right issue. The value, that's the same as the price per share after the right issue. So I hope online you can see the question. I was referring to the question Number two, part B. Number two, part B. It is there on page 53. Number two, part B. It is there on page 53. So that question is about Nyanduso Limited. Is making a one for the four rights. So the question has given you the number of the rights. So when they would like you to compute the theoretical X right price. When they would like you to compute the theoretical X right price. When they like you to compute the theoretical x right price. So to calculate the theoretical x right price, to compute the theoretical x right price, we take the number of, we, we use the last formula. I was using two formulas. Once the question has given you the offer price and the current market price and the number of the rights, we use that shorter formula. So the question gave you four rights. The question gave you four. Those are the same as the four shares. So the four shares are valued at the current market price. You can see the current market price of 10.80. So multiplied by 10.80. Multiplied by 10.80. So you take four shares multiplied by 10.8. Four shares multiplied by 10.8. Then when you have four shares, you acquire one new share. When you have four shares, you acquire one new share. One new share is for issued at the offer price. You can see the issue costing how much? Four point, so the six point four. So you multiply by six point four so that we come up with what is supposed to be the total value. So this will be six point four zero. So when you add this one will be five. Then for three point two plus six point four. So the theoretical x right price will now be 49.6 divided by 5. 49.6 divided by 5. Nine point nine two. So you get nine point nine. So that is now about how to get the theoretical x right price. That's now how you will be able to compute the theoretical x right price. So Roman letter two, they wanted you to compute the value per share after the right issue. That is the same as the market price per share after the right issue. The question, that Roman letter two, they are simply asking you to calculate the market price per share after the right 
issue. We are assembly as we need to calculate the market price per share after the right issue. So to come up with the market price per share after the right issue, so market price per share after the right issue, simply take the price earning ratio, multiply by earning per share after the right issue. So market price per share will be given by market price per share will be given by the price earning ratio multiplied by the earnings per share. Market price per share will be given by the price earning ratio multiplied by the earning per share. So price earning ratio was given, they gave us how many times? You can see the price earning ratio at the end. They gave you 10. So what we are lacking is the earning per share. What we are lacking is the earning per share. So to compute the earnings per share, to compute earnings per share, it is supposed to be given by earnings available. Earnings available, you divide by the number of ordinary shares. Number of ordinary shares by the number of the ordinary shares. So earning per share will be equal to earnings available we divide by the number of the ordinary shares. So we need to get the earnings available. We need to get the earnings available. So normally to get the earnings available, we shall be able to check through the question where they had said that where they had said that the company has 4 million shares in issue with a market price of 10.8. But you can see the price earning ratio is what? 10. So we shall first of all compute the current. We shall first of all compute the current. So this one is the earning per share after. The earning per share after. This is the earning per share after the right. Issue. Also, this one is the market price per share after the right issue. Also, remember this one you indicate the remote by the earning per share after the right issue. So, before now we get there, we should get the current earning per share. We need to come up with the current, the current earning per share. So, you know from the previous question that, sorry, we know from here that price, market price per share is supposed to be given by what? Price earning ratio multiplied by earning per share. So what I do, I take the current, I make this part to be the subject. I take the current, the current market price per share, then I divide by the price so we simply take the current market price per share, we divide by the price earning ratio. So current market price per share has been given as 10.8, has been given as 10.80. The price earning ratio was given as 10. The price earning ratio was given as 10. The price earning ratio was given as 10. One point zero eight. One point zero eight. Then now we can be able to get there. We want to get the total current earnings. We get the total total current earnings get it. so before so before i get that total current earnings let us also get the number of the issues to be issued let us also get the number of the issues to be issued we also compute the number of the issues issues to be issued number of 
they share us with the issues. So to come up with number of the new shares to be issued, you simply take existing number of the ordinary shares, the existing number of the ordinary shares, the existing number of the ordinary shares. Then we divide by the number of the rights. We divide by the number of the rights. When you want to compute the number of the new shares to be issued, we simply get the existing number of the ordinary shares, then we divide by the number of the rights. We divide by the number of the rights. So to come up with existing number of the ordinary shares, they were given to the question. The company has how many million in issue shares? Are you able to see the four million shares? Then the number of the rights are how many? Number of the rights are four. So existing number of the ordinary shares are four million, number of the rights are four. So this will give you a total of one billion. The existing number of the ordinary shares. So from there, we should now be able to calculate the total earnings available. We need to get the total earnings available. Total earnings available. Total earnings available. So to get the total earnings available, to get the total earnings available, to come up with the total earnings available, we start with from there existing shares the existing shares the existing shares so existing shares we know there are how many shares four million shares so you take the four million shares multiplied by the current earning per share you see the current earning per share we calculated we got which one point Zero eight. So when you take now existing number of the ordinary shares multiplied by the current earnings per share, you get the total earnings for the existing shares. So this should be able to give you which figure? 4.3 4 million. 4.32 million. Then there is now also the new shares. There is also the one for the new shares. So for the new shares, you got one million shares. Right? Now, so when you go through the question, when you go through the question, is the new shares are expected to yield. The new shares are expected to yield what percent? Five percent of the earnings. So. What do you do? You take those new shares, multiply by the offer price. You see the offer price? It was 6.4. So multiply by 6.4. But when you buy them at 6.4, they will give you a return of 5%. So get now 5% of that. Get now 5% of that to give you the return of the new shares to give you the return for the new earnings for the new share. So then, we are about to change. So it is point zero point three two. So when you add them, they will give you a total of what? It is 4.6. Is it 4.64? Then these shares in total now and that is 5 million. So total shares, 4 plus 1 will give you 5 million. Then the total earnings. So now we come back up on you where we want to get the earnings per share after the tax. Where 
They want now to calculate their earning per share after the tax. So to compute their earnings per share after the tax. So you can be able to give you to be able to give you 4.64 millions divided by the total shares, which are five millions. So that should be able to give you the annex per share after the right issue. It should be able to give you the earning per share after the right issue. Earning per share after the rights issue. Zero point, zero point nine two eight. So once you have done that, you go back up there. You see the formula I gave you earlier? So market price per share. Market price per share after now the right issue. Market price per share after the right issue. You simply take the price earning ratio, which was how many times? Price earning ratio will always remain the same. Sorry? Exactly the same. And then you multiply by the earning per share after the right issue, which you have gotten a, zero, a figure of 0 0.9828. So that now should be able to give you the value of the share or the market price per share after the right issue. It will give you the value of the share or the market price per share after the right issue. Value of the share or simply market price per share after the right issue. After the right issue after the right issue. So that is what we have for that portion. That's now what we have for that portion of the question. Then now I would like to do another one more question on the right issue, then we finish that topic. So Kunaila will one be the next sitting, the one for November 2017. The one for November 2017. The one for November 2017. So November 2017, there is a question number. November 2017, there's a question number two, part B. November 2017, there is a question number two, part B. November 2017, there is a question number two, part B. November 2017, there is a question number two, part B. So that November 2017, question two, part B, it is on page 49. It is there on page 49. So the question reads that Maji Mazuri Limited, an all equity financed company, an all equity financed company has an issued share capital. It has an issued share capital of shillings 10 million. Issued share capital of shillings 10 million ordinary shares of shillings 10 per value of shillings 10 per value. The company paid a dividend of 0.4 per share. The company paid a dividend of 0.4 per share last period at the market price per share, which is 20, and it is exact dividend. So the company is contemplating raising additional funds through a right issue. The company is contemplating raising additional funds through the right issue. The management has proposed a one for four right issue. The management has proposed a one for four right issue at an issue price of 15 per share. At an issue price of 15 per share. The funds raised are the funds raised are intended to be used. The funds raised are intended to be used to finance 
a major new project, which is expected to increase, which is expected to increase the company's annual after tax, which is expected to increase the company's annual after tax cash flows by shillings 950,000 in perpetuity. 950,000 in perpetuity. So now required, required, Roma letter one, come right, market price per share. The come right, market price per share after the announcement of the right issue. After the announcement of the right issue. Roma letter two, theoretical X right, market price per share. Raw matter number three, the theoretical value of each, right? Then, when it comes to part C, they were saying that evaluate the impact of the right issue in B above on the value of the wealth of an existing shareholder who holds 1,600 ordinary shares in Maji Missouri Limited and she makes 10,000 in his savings account. Assuming that this shareholder decides to, Roma letter one, exercise all his rights. Roma letter two, sell all his rights. Roma letter three, ignore the rights issue. So that is now the question I want us to start with. So we start with the Roma letter one, where they want him to compute. They come right, market price per share after the announcement of the right issue. So when we started, we computed the come right market price per share. When we started this topic, we computed the come right market price per share. So come right market price per share, the come right market price per share. The come right market price per share. So to compute the come right market price per share. We want to compute so the market price. So to get the come right market price per share. So when you want to compute the come right market price per share, the come right market price per share, the come right market price per share, the come right market price per share is supposed to be given by market price per share before the announcement of the right issue. It is supposed to be given by market price per share. Market price per share before the announcement. Announcement of the rights issue. Then we are supposed to add the MPP per share. Are supposed to add to the end in per share. So when you want to compute the come rights market price per share, it will be given by market price per share before announcement of the right issue. Then we add the NPV per share. We add the net present value per share. So to compute that net present value per share, to compute the net present value per share, net present value per share, it is supposed to be given by present value for the cash inputs minus the present value of the cash outputs. So to compute the NPP. NPV will be given by present value of the cash inflows e minus the present value of the cash outflows minus the present value of the cash outflows. 
So another challenge that we have in the question, you are not given the discount rate. You remember to get the, the, net, the present value for the cash inflows. We should come up with the discounting rate. So discounting rate is the same as the cost of capital. Discounting rate is the same as the cost of capital. So if it is not given, we normally calculate it. If it is not given, we normally compute it. When it is not given, we normally compute that figure. So to get the cost of capital, get the cost of capital, so to come up with the cost of capital, to get the cost of capital, to be given by D. So cost of capital, this we have not done the topic for the cost of capital, but I require that item to get the present value. So I will give you the formula, but when we shall get to the topic of the cost of capital, I will go back. So I hope we agree on that. Yeah, so this question did not give you the cost of capital. But for us to answer the question, we need that cost of capital. Then I have not done the topic of the cost of capital. So to get the cost of capital, it will be evident that is P. Divide by PO. PO is the current market price. Then you would express it as a percentage. Remember, cost of capital is the same as the return on your capital. The cost of capital is the same as the return on what? On your capital. So to know the return on your capital, you simply take the dividends. Then you divide by the current price. Yeah, the return that you are getting. The return that you are getting, simply get the dividend that you have been paid. Simply get the dividend that you have done what you have been paid. Then divide by, divide by the current market price per share. So when it comes to that portion, dividend per share was given in the question. The question had given you some information on the dividend. You see up there in the first paragraph. The company paid a dividend of how much? In the first paragraph. You can see after attention of the bar bar, they continue to say the company paid a dividend of 0.4 per share. 0.4 per share divided by the current. So the price at the moment, which is ex dividend, is 20. Is 20. Then express it as. Two percent. Yeah, so that will be now our cost of capital or discount rate. It will be the cost of capital or the discount rate. So we want to compute the NPV per share. So to get that NPV per share, we should get the present, we should, we should also get the number of the owner shares first. Also, number of the ordinary. Shares because it must be the NPV per share, the number of the ordinary shares. So, to compute the number of the ordinary shares, they have said that the company is contemplating raising additional funds through the right issue. So, the management has proposed that. So, the funds are intended to be used to finance the new project. Yeah. So, they say that the funds are issued are raised are intended to be used to finance a new major project so that new major project which is expected to increase the company's annual after tax to how much nine hundred and fifty thousand but our concern is what is given up there you see the number of the rights are four but the issue price is what is given as 15. so what we need to do is now we should get the number of the new shares to be issued. We should come up with the number of the new shares to be issued. So 
The challenge is that when you check through the first paragraph, they were able to give you the 10 million. You see the 10 million. 10 million issues. 10 million issues. But the bar value per share is how much? 10. So when you divide by 10, you shall be having how many number of ordinary shares? 1 million ordinary shares. We shall be having 1 million ordinary shares. So after that, now we get the present value of the cash inflows. So present value for the cash inflows from what we did under the concept of the time value of money. It is supposed to be given by the annuity multiplied by present value interest factor for the annuity. Present value interest factor for the annuity. The cost of capital is 2%. The cost of capital is 2%. You see what we calculated? Then before required, you can see before required, we say that the company's annual after tax cash outflow by it is how much? 950,000 in perpetuity. You see the perpetuity? Perpetuity is up to infinity. Perpetuity is up to infinity. So our annuity, our annuity is the 950,000. But we said that, you remember up to infinity. Up to infinity, it is not in the table. This part is normally the same as one over R. When it is not in the table, up to infinity, it is normally the same as one divided by R. So you multiply by one. So R is our 2%. So 2%, that is 2 divided by 100, the same as 0. 0.02. 0. So we take. 950,000 multiplied by 1 divided by 0 0.02. 4.75. 47.5 minutes. So 47.5 minutes. You get 47.5 minutes. So now you less present value for the cash outflows minus the present value of the cash outflows minus the present value for the cash outflows. So present value for the cash outflows also it was not given. The amount to raise in order to finance the new project. The amount to raise in order to finance the new project should be what? Our present value for the cash outflow. So to come up with that, we check where they say that, where they say that the right issue, 144 right issue at an issue price of how much? 15 per share at an issue price of 15 per share. So what we should do at that point? So what we do at that point? That you want to get the new shares to be issued. You want to get so these are another work new shares, new shares to be issued. So new shares to be issued, new shares to be issued. We simply take existing number of the ordinary shares, existing number of the ordinary shares. Existing number of the ordinary shares. Existing number of the ordinary shares. Then we divide by the number of the rights. Number of the rights. 
So existing number of the ordinary shares, remember we got one million. The number of the ordinary shares. Then, so this one was one million. It was meant to be one million. So number of the rights were given as how many? Number of the rights. The number of the rights were given as how many? There were four. There were four. So divide by four. Divide by four. Zero point. Zero point two five. Nine million. Oh, so that was a map. Yeah. So two zero point two five. So zero point two five minutes. Zero point two five minutes. So, you simply take those 0 0.25 millions, multiplied by the offer price. That now will give you the new funds to be raised. So new funds to be raised is the same as the cost of the new project. So 250,000, that one we multiply by what? The offer price. Your offer price to throw and up here. 15 is here. Yeah, so multiplied by the offer price, which is 15. Multiplied by the offer price, which is 15. Sorry? 3.75 minutes. So when you subtract, you will now come up with the net present value. So it is coming to each one. What is three points? It's for three minutes. So online, I hope you are okay at that point. Online Mukosawa. Online or Menyamazo. I don't know whether they are okay. So after that, someone else have said yes. I hope others, we are fine. So now we get the LPV per share. So get now the LPV per share. So online, I hope people are okay. I've only seen one person who is saying he's okay. The rest, I don't know. So LPV per share, NPV per share. You simply now come up with that NPV, which is for three millions, which is for three million seven hundred and fifty. So the number of the all shares. 
you divide by the number of the ordinary shares. You divide by the number of the ordinary shares. So number of the ordinary shares, there was one million plus the number of the shares to be issued, which was 0 0.25 million. So that will give you the total number of the shares after the right issue. That will give you the total number of the shares. So to get the NPV per share, take this NPV, then divide by the total number of the shares after the right issue. So total number of the shares after the right issue, remember 1 million existing shares, new shares were 0 0.25. So that now should be able to give you the NPV per share. So, exactly 35. So that should now give you the NPV per share. So let us now compute what is supposed to be. Let us now compute what is supposed to be. What is supposed to be the come right market price per share. So now we get the come right market price per share. So to get that come right market price per share, to come up with the come right market price per share, we simply now take market price per share before the announcement of the right issue. The question had given you that price, which was 20. You see the 20? Yeah, so simply take the 20, and now you add 35. That will give you the come right market price per share. So those marks was not warranting all that working, but now after doing all that working, there is information we shall still use for the Roma letter two, Roma letter three and part C. That's why they gave you the fewer marks with a lot of workings, but now there will be no other workings. All those workings were to be used for the Roma letter two, Roma letter three in that level. So now we can go to the Roma letter two. Roma letter two, we compute now the theoretical X right price. Roma letter two, we now compute the theoretical X right price. The theoretical X right price. So to come up with the theoretical X right price, to come up with the theoretical X right price, to come up with the theoretical X right price. So theoretical x right price, get the theoretical x right price. There's a shorter formula you are able to use. There was a shorter formula you are using. So the shorter formula that you are able to use, you remember the number of the rights? So you take four shares, you take four shares, multiply by the current market price per share multiplied by the current market price per share, which was 20. The current market price per share, which is 20. So you take four shares multiplied by 20. The four shares multiplied by 20 should give us 80. 80. Then when you have four shares, you get one new share. When you have four shares, you get one new share. So the one new share is valued at the offer price. The one new share is valued at the offer price, which is supposed to be, they gave you 50. So this will give you a total of, when you add the data, it will give you five. This one is going to give us five, like that. So theoretical x right price is 
Natuba na kiti na yesu. Sasa nataka mkoongoze kwa moja kwa moja. Baadhi ya wapenzi. Sio ni rahisi. Na formula nyingi nilizopea. How to get the value of the right. So value of the right it is market price per share minus the correspond exchange price. So value of the right we simply take market price per share minus the theoretical x right price. So your theoretical x right price will be 19. Yeah, so market price per share is 20. So the value of the right will now be 1. The value of the right is now going to be 1. Now we are going the other formula. We are going to the other formula. I have given you three formulas on how to get the value from the right. I have given you four formulas on how to get the value from the right.
So <clears throat> we go now to so to memorize are you? Are we all okay? Mm -hmm. So we go to part C of the question. We go to part C of the question. We now go to part C of the question. So part C is that <clears throat> evaluate the impact of the right issue. Evaluate the impact of the right issue in part B above. 
on the value of the wealth of an existing shareholder who holds 1,600 ordinary shares in Maji Mazuri Limited. So, and should extend 1,000 in his savings account. Assuming that this shareholder decides to vote, Roma letter one, exercise all his rights. Roma letter two, sell all his rights. Roma letter three, ignore the rights issue. Roma letter three, we ignore the right issue. So what do we do? We start off with before. Remember they have specified, it is only about what they were. They have not talked about percentage of ownership. So you can see that part, that assuming the shareholder decides to, uh, the, what, the impact of the right issue in part B above on the value of the wealth. So you have seen that part. Uh, So we start with before the right issue. We start with before the right issue. Before the right issue. We start off with before the right issue. So before the right issue, before the right issue, we want to get a web status. Want to come up with the status. We start off with the wallet status. So under the wallet status, this will be value of the shares. Value of the shares. We start off with value of the shares. So before the right issue, they have said he had how many shares? Oh, no, 1,600 under the part C. So you take 1,600, multiply by the current market price per share. You can see up there the 20 shillings. So take 1,600, multiply by 20. That is 2,000. Yes, that is 2,000. The next one should now be we add the savings account. We add the savings account. Add the savings account. So savings account, if you go on a person that way, So when you add them, they should give us a total of what? So after getting the 42, that is now before the right issue. We want now to compare that with the after the right issue. When you exercise, when you sell, and also when you do it. So let us now check the position after the right issue. We now check the position after the right issue. We now check the position after the right issue. After the right issue. So after the rights issue, after the rights issue, we have been given some details, the number of the rights. You see the number of the rights? So we need to get the new shares. The new shares. So new shares that is going to receive. The number of the rights were how many? Four shares. When you have four shares, you get one. 
share. How four shares? You get one new share. So this company had how many shares? Sorry, this investor had how many shares? So how many new shares? But a four hundred. Ah, will be able to get four hundred. So total shares, total shares, now be sixteen hundred plus four hundred. Sixteen hundred plus four hundred. So we start off with option one. We start off with option one. So option one is supposed to be exercise all these rights. Exercise all these rights. So when you exercise all the rights, we want to get the wealth. So we are looking for the wealth. So for the wealth, we start off with value of the shares. We start off with the value of the shares. So you see, after the right issue, he has got how many shares? He has got 2,000 shares. Then you multiply by the current market price, the theoretical x rate price. Sorry. After the right issue, all shares are valued at the theoretical x rate price. You look at our knowledge 19. So multiply by. 19, which is supposed to give us which value? Sorry? 28. Then, apart from the value of the shares, we also add the savings account. We also add the savings. So at the savings account. So savings account it is how much? Then we less the cost of the rice. It's cost of the rice. So cost of the rice, there are 400 shares. That you receive. Remember those ones, but we value them at the offer price. Offer price. So that one should be able to give us each year. So when you subtract, we now get the net. Is it the same or it is different? So in a board, the same. So when you exercise the rights, we say there will be no changes in the world. So we go to Roman letter two. We go to Roman letter two. Roman letter two is sell all these rights. Sell all these rights. We sell all these rights. Sell on this place. Sell on this. 
this by this. So when you sell all these rights, you start with the value of the remaining shares. The remaining shares. We start off with value of the remaining shares. Value of the remaining shares. So value for the remaining shares. How many shares are remaining? 69. You sell the right, the 400. You see the 400 that you sold? Yeah. When you sell the rights, you only sell the one that you acquired. You acquired 400. So the remaining shares will be 69. But after the right issue, all shares are valued at the theoretical X rate price. So, was it 19? Yeah, so multiplied by 19. Then you also add sell of the rights. You also add sell of the rights. Somebody also add sell of the rights. So when it comes to the sell of the rights, you acquired 400 shares. But when you are selling, you still sell at the theoretical index rate price. After the right issue, all shares are valued at the theoretical index rate price. Then you also add, also add, the savings account. You also add the savings account. Also add the savings account. How much was there as the savings account? The now less the cost of the rights. Now less the cost of the rights. So cost of the rights, there were 400 shares. There were 400 shares. At what price per share? So that you get now the net worth. So it is still the same. So it's not the same. Because it did not participate in the right issue, where is the task normally go down? But we shall look at it when we conclude. So we go now to option three. We go to option three. We now go to option three. We now go to option three. So option three, it is meant to be, it is meant to be where you ignore the right issue. Ignore, ignore the right issue. Ignore the right issue. Ignore the right issue. When you ignore the right issue, you don't participate in the right issue. When it is taking place. So, if you don't participate in the right issue, we start the value of the shares. We start off with value of the shares. So, value of the shares, value of the shares. So, he did not participate in the right issue. So, he was only left with the original shares, which was 69. There are only 1600. So the 1600 are valued at 
the theoretical x right equals which was then because they did not participate in the right issue there will be no cost for the rights you see that but there was savings you had some money in the bank so you are part the savings so savings was which so add them together Add them together to make the total cost. So you can see this one is yes. So now they were asked me to comment what about the wallet status. So when we comment, when we comment, we shall be able to summarize that. That the wallet status, the wallet status after the right issue, the wallet status after the right issue will remain the same as before the right issue. Will remain the same as for the right issue. Will remain the same as the right issue. Remain the same as of before the right issue. Will remain the same as before the right issue. If the shareholder, if the shareholder, if the shareholder exercise the rights, exercise the rights or sell the rights, he exercise the rights or sell the rights. Exercise the rights or sell the rights. However, if he ignores the right issue. However, if he ignores the right issue, however, if he ignores the right issue, comma, the wallet status will reduce. If he ignores the right issue, comma, the wallet status will reduce. The wallet status will reduce. The wallet status will reduce. So that is now all about the rights issue. That is now all <clears throat> about the rights issue. So that topic, if we go to the course outline, we may not know that it's there. The command of the sources of finance. The rights issue is one of the sources of finance. But you see, when they, when they test, <clears throat> they test so many questions on it. And when they test Nikuba, it can be like 10 marks, 15 marks in that order. So I am picking those key topics that are highly examined. We finish those ones first. You only end the capital budget. I see you have seen the topic known as capital budget. That topic can take you one and a half months. But in the exam, maybe 15 months. So I will do it as the last one. So there. After I have simplified all these other small topics, which are frequently tested, and they also add value because we save time. If I start with the wrong one, you see at the moment, people may not be very much available, but I know some few days the exam will be available. So that way it will be able to make. So that is now the conclusion of this particular topic of the right issue. So, the next topic I want us to go to is supposed to be management of the working capital. The next topic will be management of the working capital. The next topic that I will be discussing will be management of the working capital. Management of the working capital. So our next topic should be the management of the working capital. So ordinarily, when it comes to the working capital, there are simply the current assets known as the current liabilities. So working capital is simply the current assets known as the current liabilities. Then also our major concern on that will be now how to finance how to finance the working capital. To finance the working capital, 
there will be like three strategies. We shall be having aggressive financing strategy. We shall also be able to have moderate financing strategy and also the mod modern financing strategy. So those three approaches, I will be able to show you after we calculate what is supposed to be the current assets. Remember current assets for this case will be like debtors, stock, cash, in that order. But creditors will be the current liabilities. So we shall be forced to do some workings to get the current assets and also get the current liability. When you subtract, that's now when we shall be able to come up with what is supposed to be the working capital. We did something brief about the working capital cycle, the one for the non-manufacturing and manufacturing. So those ratios now come back. But now we shall do them in an elaborative way so that we see how to get that portion. So I don't want to start it because it is almost like 10 to 9 minutes remaining. So it will not make a difference. Then I have discovered your class yes, a man, a part of now, not more than five. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying away, but on Tuesday, the other class normally on Tuesday. When I start a topic, I can answer it. Because the other one, like this one, I'm finishing, but some people are still lost. Because the first part, remember when I introduced, yeah, most of you are not in. So even whatever we have been doing at the end, some people are coming asking me now, how do we go about this? So it still creates an issue. So because of that, I'm proposing I will not have a class with you at two. on Tuesday to answer the topic, come with them. So that no people, those who are already working, they are not affected. For the other time when I started, I recorded, I sent them, but still they are saying it is a mix up. Remember the one for the risk analysis? It was still a problem because people came when I've already started. Now I'm doing questions. You look at now this one, I'm doing this question, but people who are there at the start, they remember what we mean by ignore the right issue, what save the right of exercise. So it is easier for that. But if you just come and you discover we are talking about ignore, so you still start wondering what will happen for that. So in the afternoon, because I'm supposed to start a new topic, I will not do it today. I will do it on weekdays when almost everybody is in class so that I see how it, because once I start and I explain, now questions may not be an issue. Questions may not be an issue. So I hope it is okay with those who are online because I discovered this topic we are finishing, most of you were saying it was not clear. And in physical class, I only have three people, but there are normally so many of them. So most of them are not there today. So we can stop there. Is it okay for those who are online? Yeah, so we can stop there for now. <laughs>